Rabonim, Ministers, Members of Knesset, Mayor Revivi, Social Worker Anat, Family and Friends. I know my darling wife Lucy would have asked me to state from the beginning that these words are from the two of us. Tonight, as ever, the sentiments are from her. She is my CEO, and I'm just the scribe. Firstly, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for your warmth, your kindness, and your love. Never have we seen such an outpouring of love. And thank you to everyone who has helped in every possible way. I've not had to do anything. Everything has been done for us. All of you are holy tzaddikim. You are a miracle. Rabbi Akiva Tatz once taught me a question asked in the Talmud. If Siamese twins two babies conjoined at the hip, or the head, or the arm are born, do they inherit as one person, or do they inherit as two separate people? And the Talmud answers, you must do the following test. If you hurt one of the bodies, and the other side feels the pain, then they are one. Today, the Jewish people have proven that we are one. We are united, amechat. When a simple, quiet family in a frat is devastated, the whole country hurts. And when a family in Tel Aviv is devastated, the whole country hurts. There's no greater proof of our unity, am Yisrael chai. And we know this. In fact, we've always known this. We have been marching through the streets of Jerusalem and Tel Aviv with Israeli flags, arguing over whether there should be a vote of 61, 65, 70, an override clause, no override clause in the Bagats, the Supreme Court. Let's be honest. Most of us have no idea what any of this means. But in three weeks' time, on Yom HaZikaron and Yom HaTzmaut, we will once again be marching side by side, all of us carrying our Israeli flags, left wing next to right wing, religious next to secular, united against the real threat the threat of pure evil, the threat of a mad ideological driven terrorist funded by Iran, Hamas, Hezbollah, with a Kalashnikov rifle who doesn't care whether you're from a frat or Tel Aviv, London or Italy, who's prepared to destroy your children's lives in an instant. And then we will all march as one. Am Yisrael Chai. Some people have asked me, how can you have such emunah, faith in God's continued goodness? Please, God, it should last longer than just today. And I've told them that I've listened to almost all of Rabbi Ephraim Goldberg's emunah shirim available online on yutorah.org. And in them, he repeats over and over again that there is one main formula for emunah. Always focus on what you do have and not on what you do not. And I still have three wonderful children, Karen, Tali, Yehuda, and a wonderful wife, Lucy, Leah Batsipora. May she please God soon come out of her coma. And Maya and Rina, who lie before us, you are now part of us all forever.
And if the Jewish people would look at what we have and not at what we do not have, we would realize that we still are a united people. We're united against a common enemy. We are the forces of good fighting the forces of evil. And we will always prevail. Am Yisrael Chai. The Talmud tells the story of the wife of Rabbi Meir, who did not want to disturb his Shabbat afternoon shiur to tell him that their two sons had just passed away from a deadly virus. So after Shabbat, she hints to him by asking the question, before Shabbat, someone brought me a precious gift, and now they have come and want to take it back. Should I return it or not? How will I explain to Lucy what has happened to our two precious gifts? Maya and Rena when she wakes up from her coma. <laughs> My beautiful, perfect Maya. We named you God's water, and you are so many people's friend, flowing between so many different groups, out on Friday night with one group of friends, and another group in our lounge on Shabbos afternoon, and a third visit to a close friend on Saturday night on Matzash, every week, Maishki, at your bat mitzvah just eight short years ago. We tried to find a biblical character to compare you to. Was it Rachel? Was it Esther? Was it Rebecca? And then we realized that you were most like the matriarch Sarah, since in your 12 years you had already moved to Israel at the age of 12, left at the age of 6, and come back again at the age of 11, just like Sarah in the Torah, Sarah Menu, who also entered and left Israel twice. Sadly, the comparison does not stop here. Sarah was buried in Marat HaMachpelah, the cave of the doubles in the holy city of Hebron, as each of the forefathers was buried along with their spouse in pairs. And Maya, today you and Rina will also be buried in a double grave. Maya, darling, you wanted to sign up for another year of national service where you could really make a difference. But mommy and I wanted you to start your studies and maybe meet a special boy. But you insisted, girls like you always do, two years of volunteering so we were waiting to see what and where it would be. You were always an angel, and now you will always be our guardian angel. <laughs> My beautiful darling Rena. such a great student, such a great friend, such a great madricha, youth leader. You were so responsible, and if the Ezra Youth Club needed cleaning on a Friday morning, and you were the only one who turned up from your group, you would do it single-handedly for three hours. People love you and always knew they could depend on you. Less than two weeks ago, 
You had 20 of your girls from the youth club sleeping over in our home with your co-youth leader, Adi. Mummy and I had to find somewhere else to spend that night. The girls made so much noise and had so much fun. Rina Bina, you were considering the army in two years' time after Midrashah, after seminary. You probably would have been in the intelligence. You also dreamt of traveling the world. And now you're traveling to heaven. You too are an angel. And I know you're currently organizing Hashem's youth club in Shemayim. In the Torah reading for Shabbat Chol Moed that we said yesterday, Moshe asks God, Show me your glory. And God replies, No one can see my face but you can see my back. An emeritus chief rabbi, Lord Jonathan Sachs, that's all, explained that Moshe is really asking, why do bad things happen to good people? And God answers, you'll never know, except possibly by looking back from the far distant future. The message is, we can never understand God's will. But this Shabbat, there was also the reading from Yechezkel, from Ezekiel. The valley of dry bones. Bones in a valley. Maybe it was the Bikah Yarden, the Jordan Valley, where you were both so suddenly taken away from us. <laughs> and those bones come back to life. And Maya and Rina, you too are coming back to life. You are two flames which have not gone out. Your flames have added to our flames and are strengthening them, bringing more and more light to the world through every one of us. Am Yisrael Chai! Today, we celebrate the festival of Pesach, when the Jewish people left Egypt and crossed the Red Sea, a process that took just one week but it wasn't plain sailing. After three days, God told us to go back to Piacherut, which is Pitom, the place that were slaves for 210 years, straight back into the hands of Pharaoh. And then they had to come out a second time. Yes, there were two Yetziot Mitzrayim. Yes, we actually left Egypt twice. And the message is clear that Gula, the journey to redemption, is a slow one. Three steps forward and two steps back. And Maya and Rina, with your loss, our world has taken two steps back. <laughs> it is customary in Israel to ask forgiveness from the departed at the funeral. Rina and Maya, if any of us here have ever hurt your feelings, or treated you without the respect that you deserve. Please forgive us. We would never have done that intentionally. Maya and Rena, you have inspired us, you've loved us, and in turn we will love you forever. May your souls be bound in the bond of eternal life, and may we, and no one else in the whole world ever know so much sorrow. Amen. <laughs>